Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Eternal Evolution. For today's video, I want to showcase my little team that is just crushing my campaign, my story mode, with our little baby one copy of Leo leading the way. All right, so this is my free-to-play account, of course. I was able to snag Leo for just 60 summons with a guarantee on that last banner. I was super happy. I actually didn't think I was going to have enough, but it seems like every friggin' week we have enough to summon on a banner if you want to, which is kind of crazy, honestly. This is such a good, wonderful, lovely, generous game, and I'm so happy that they actually give us opportunities to summon for people we want and at least get a copy. And Leo is one of those. I'm gonna. I just moved over so you can see my commander. Uh, Leo is one of those rare heroes that, even with just one copy early on at least, he can be quite game-changing as he dies right now, right? Literally the perfect timing. <laughs> but that's gonna happen, of course, being the situation, and it's a lot of RNG with timing with his unkillable and whatnot, but yeah, so I wanted to a little bit showcase how powerful the Vagradon... Vagradon, Hagradon Vanguard Commander is. <laughs> how great the synergy is with everything um, regarding the prototypes, the team composition, and honestly, just using Na Fung has been amazing as well. He's super helpful. I don't have him in anything crazy, but uh, it's so, so good. So this team is so much crowd control that it just does so well. Um, I don't know how far we're going to push. I'm going to have to end up pausing this and finding out how far I can make it. But TLDR, um, my Ampu just got to Immortal 1. Oh, sorry, Immortal 0 level. And that was amazing for him. He's been insane. Anpu and Sorvali are just really great heroes in the same way that Daniel came and changed things, adding insanely good crowd control with that AoE stunned. Anpu does it as well, and he, along with the combination of using Hagridon with the Pain Rune and Flashpoint, uh, makes such a big difference in just the success of pushing through the story. It's just crazy. It's crowd control is king for this sort of thing. And Leo is the type of tank that also does a lot of damage. Even if he dies a little early because I get unlucky with my timing for the immunity procs and whatnot. Or the healing, I should say, from Sorvali. That also helps. Um... He's still tanking the majority of the fight, and it's enough for Anpu to come in crowd control and just destroy. So, first let's talk about the team. Um, Leo and Nafang and uh, Crete, right? They are our three vanguards, so we're benefiting from the commander here. Let's stop this. Let's stop this so we can take a look at it and I can discuss. I'm with myself over here. So this commander, remember they have um, all heroes receive a shield equal to 30% of their max HP lasts for 5 seconds after a hero uses a displacement skill. Now displacement skills are when your character like forcefully moves through another spot like teleports, transports, sma jumps up, smashes, you know, like the way that Crete comes and smashes and whatnot. Um, but deploying three or more vanguard heroes will activate these effects. Number one, every time your vanguard heroes are attacked by an enemy hero or monster, there's a 40% chance to regenerate 3% of their max HP. So this just adds a lifesteal, like type, that's insane. And then in PvP, it adds some other stuff, but we're not going to worry about that right now. That's not what we're talking about here. So, Hagridon, as a commander, gives everybody a shield. We don't need to worry about 
a tank with a shield set and whatnot. We don't need to because he does it for us. Also, what happens here with a flashpoint is any excess healing gets transferred into a shield instead. So it gets converted into a shield. If your people are already at full health and they're healing beyond, um, well, that's going to allow you to turn into a shield. Now, I don't have Masrani in this team right now, so it's less of a less of a thing, but um still, I'm just I'm still showing for sake of argument here. You could if you don't have Anpu and Sorvali, uh honestly, Masrani and Daniel would be the other ones to insert in here if you have them. That would be very good as well. Um uh, but then Pain Rune. So this is where it's at. When an allied assassin or vanguard hero loses their shield, that shield ex shall explode and inflict AoE damage to the shield, um, 28%. Weird typo here. And as well as uh, half a second of stun effect in a small radius. So those constant stuns that are popping up, it's not all on Poo, right? It's not all on Poo. He's not, he's the only stun stunner in here technically but it's all about this commander now i do want to just because i did mention flashpoint and healing i do want to remind you guys that sorvali may heal but she is a summoner class so she actually cannot benefit from all of these um prototypes unfortunately but for sake of this combination i wanted to leave this in here anyway even though this gives me a little bit more stats barely um so that way we're seeing this combination for discussion if anyone is doing the similar thing it's all about this combination three vanguards a pain rune and flashpoint it's so good you don't need to have the summoners in there as your other source of damage if you're earlier on like i am and you got like a bailey bailey and rez are also great if you got a daniel daniel and masrani daniel and rez like just playing around with the combinations like that and it's it's awesome for progression um I will say, obviously, we know Leo is a monster at tanking and doing damage. Um, I have him in da a damage reduction gear. I also took off his attack gear. I just put in HP for survivability. That's helped me a lot, at least on my main account. Um, I think I might have a mixture on this account. Nafung as well, I just built for survivability. Uh, he brings a little bit of damage reduction, decreased attack for the enemy. And then, of course, Kree brings our AoE decreased defense, which is helpful. But Kree doesn't always play nice. Uh, with people that are smashing through like an AoE effect. Uh, he does push the heroes away, like he knocks them back. Crete will like push heroes back to the top corners of your screens or you can't even see them, which can be really hard for someone like a Daniel to do an AoE stun and control everybody when they're all over the place because Crete's messing it up. So keep that in mind. Crete might not be your answer. You might want to even try Artas if you're noticing that happen a lot. If you're noticing that or if you're doing someone like Daniel that has a smaller range, like Anpu has this massive ring that goes around. So it's not as big of a deal with Anpu unless he really does push them to the top part of your screen. But you can probably still do this with, actually, let's try it. Let's try it with Artas instead of uh, Crete. But Crete does bring an AoE decrease defense, which helps do more damage quicker. And I think that's going to be a little bit more successful overall. Let me do a quick other run, though. And I will show you what I'm working with on this free-to-play. Why the hell not? So I was playing around on the main as well, too. Um, with a similar team. Trying to play around and see if I could use, like, almost the same team. But Ambu kept dying here, even in the middle. It's just so hard here in the higher levels to use that exact team. So it's something I need to play with. But yeah, it looks like we're going good here. Artas is in here instead of Crete, so yeah, we're mainly just working with Anpu as our damage dealer and a little, a decent bit of damage there from Leo as well. A one, a level one, Leo, literally. Leo that has one copy. I don't have a gene hybrid in him. He just has one evolution and he is just rocking this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pause and I'm going to see where we end up. And then where we end up, I'm going to see if we can have success by manualing it instead. And we're off to the next chapter, still rolling strong. That was the end of chapter 27, if I was blocking it. <laughs> and yet another, done with chapter 28, stage 28.
And still continuing on to chapter 30, Such Crazy Progress. Let's let another run play out and see how we're doing. All right, I could go back here, I guess. <laughs> so how are we holding up? That's one question. I think Leo dies in most of the battles that I've seen so far. Not all of them, but the harder ones, like the milestone ones that are like, you know, what is it? 8, 16, 36, 40, like the ones that are harder. Yeah, like he's already died here. Oh, hey, it's the guy from Twilight Lands from the Generalist Bond. But we're still going onward. Chapter 30, let's go. How far are we going to make it? And seriously, I keep thinking this is just going to stop, but we're still going. Stage 30 is done. On to stage 31. Woohoo! Go, baby team, go! And we're back, and I hit the spot where I got stuck. It's always the damn Sorietas and those damn purple balls. Am I right? <laughs> so, I swear, the Sorietta with Omar one gets me in multiple rounds. That comes up. It's not the first time. It's definitely not going to be the last. But I feel like every time I get hard stuck overall when I've pushed campaign, it's always the damn Sorietas. So that's kind of where, like a bailey or something comes in handy where they can jump to the back and just go kill them um who's gonna struggle here unless they get nice and close like they actually did for this one but this one i did just fail i don't think we're, oh um who's dead early this time oh god sometimes you can just restart and rng the shit out of it right or you can do it manually of course as well maybe we can distract the sorietas with leo and try to manual it Let's slow it down. Let me, okay, let's see if what's happening here. At the very end, I'll slow it down. Let's try auto one more time. Unboot splash damage, actually, like that stun, does pretty good. It surprises me. But we're at 31-12. Guys, I was at 21 last week. <laughs> That's insane. Go, Anpu, go! Anpu and Sorvali, come on. Be OP, like we know you are. Oh, Omar was like a step back and he didn't get stunned. Oh my goodness. That range for it just kills you, right? So this is the hard part. They're stunned and then he just doesn't quite have enough time. Oh, it's so close. Go. Go. Just kidding. They're not killing him. It's pretty good, though. So one Soriana. We've got potential to do this, right? Let's try it. I meant to... Oop, I meant to... Try that again. Um, Let's immediately slow it down. Let's try this on... Manual. I think I'm going to manual... Let me just manual Leo this time and see if I could direct him to make the Sorietas be distracted. Let's see. Come on, come on! Immune already procced already! Didn't get a chance! Oh my gosh. Okay, baby Leo can only do so much. I, let me, I'll let it play out just in case I get lucky. I really don't think that my timing can be... Better or worse with Anpu is just go as much as possible. <laughs> kidding, not kidding. Oh boy, that was a rough one. Gotta love when you try to manual and you do worse. But I only semi-manual. The thing, I feel like someone like Daniel you'd really want to manual because his AoE doesn't really hit well, but Anpu is a, you can't really direct his AoE, it's just, it smashes. Oh my goodness, so close! Come on, go, 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 Omar! Oh god, oh god, no! No! One more ultimate! Oh, we did it! Oh shit! Okay, we're not stuck. We're not stuck, let's go. Yeah, baby Leo with only one ev uh, evolution, not even, you know, just the ba basic upgrade. Only one single copy of Leo, though. Or in no gene hybrids. Um, yeah, yeah, he he could only hang so well, but we're still pushing through. I mean, the combination with uh, Anpu and Sorvali is amazing, and it definitely helps to have a great tank as Leo just to soak up some of that early attention. Even if he dies a little bit into battle, it's enough to help. It really is. And we still have Hagrid on, 
and the benefits of that commander here as well. And I could put Kree back in and see if it helps better than Artas, but hey, it's it's working. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to try again to see where we end up. This, is, this ended up being a very, very long recording process because I didn't expect it to go so far. The grind just keeps continuing on to stage 32. All right, and I think we stopped for today. <laughs> 32 4. Um, those little orange get you. No, but for real, I am still shocked at the team. Not because if you look at the team, it's a great team, but like. Just little baby Leo helps, and it's so much fun. And Anpu is the only level, uh, the only, wait, is he the only immortal now, or did I get, I just got Nafung to immortal as well. But still, he's the only triple SS in here. So let me show you guys what I'm working with. Nothing crazy, I can promise you. I have not been obsessively farming gear and finding perfect stats. I've not. Um, he's still, like, I don't have... <laughs> My attack percentage stuff is limited. My uh, H, you know, I'll talk about that another. But yeah, my attack percentage stuff was limited. So I actually went with this defensive set just to get the survivability and still make a set. Plus the 50% was better than a red one. Um, I did go with one set here, which still has a red one. And I did go for accuracy here because accuracy does seem to affect his damage uh, regarding his kits got um, affected by accuracy for chances to instantly explode upon death that's affected by his accuracy and it seems to make a difference overall um, I know I've, ha I've mentioned it before that I've had a clan mate give us a description of like his testing and that's one example that I've seen is higher accuracy attack set not even in light gap still did better but there's definitely certain places where i still really want to get him in light gap but for this i'm fine working with what i've got this also again um ch chance to inflict imprisonment as well so that's cool so ampu is amazing i do have him oh sorry I do have him mostly talent maxed out, not 100%. Exclusives, he's at 25. I am working to get his exclusive up because he's kind of going to be my core of my account right now. So no regrets there. Uh, we were also working with Sorvali. She is only epic, <laughs> but she is in a healing set with HP stats. Um, this is flat HP. Oh my gosh. I hope maybe I've gotten a better one by now, please. Oh God. Nope. Well, that's why she's in that for now. <laughs> that's why she's in that for now. We'll see if we can get some better boots on her soon. Maybe I've gotten lucky. <sighs> but this is another thing. It's like the Attack percentage stuff with attack gear, HP percentage stuff in HP gear. It took me the longest time on my main account to even have remotely the right stuff. I swear, it's just like no matter how much gear you have, it never, I just can't seem to get perfect stuff and I need to take the time to cleanse my main account. But that's another story. This is the free to play. All right. So I do have her with HP, HP, and unfortunately flat HP. This is going to be trash. That's why it's not locked. It's not really a big deal because I'm just going to crunch it with another piece anyway, so it's fine. But I don't really have any exclusives on her because I can't because she's only epic. So I have what I can with the talent tree, just the skills, and that's about it. But she's still there surviving to the end in a lot of those battles. Um, Nafung, he is amazing. I love him so much. I have him just build defensively. Oh gosh, it's super funny to see that. I obviously haven't changed his gear either, have I? Uh, let's go ahead and at least put that on him. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, when I first did Rise of Heroes, of course, I was working on him. And I'm just sl slowly replacing gear. Still in some red gear. It is what it is. I'm, it's, it's a progress. Uh, let's see here. I also had Artos in the team. I have him at Legendary 2. 
He is in defense-based gear and gluttony for the set. So I did kind of go a folk. De so he's got this defense glove with a crit rate set. So it's that's a little crit rate, but nothing crazy. But it does help give him a little bit extra damage. Gluttony helps him attack more often. He does benefit with that. I actually have... I have no talents on him. But to be fair, I really wasn't using him that much. Although now I'm... I use him on Atlas Whale if it's below 50% or about to be. So I probably will go ahead and do these. It might make a bit of a difference, but I mean, you could also use Crete. It was just, I was worried about Crete pushing people away too much, but he actually probably would have pushed me a little further. But my my Artas was higher level. I did use Crete in some of the battles, but as you can see, this stuff is not, oh my gosh. I have this higher level stuff just sitting here, not even leveled. No wonder why, this is where my, I wonder where my HP percentage gear went. Oh god, this is a hot mess. This is what happens when you don't have much to choose from. This gear needs to go be put on someone I'm, I mean, I'm actually using Crete usually. I really am. I just decided to take him out and put Artas in there because of the, I mean, for the Hagridon commander's sake. But also just to see if it was a little bit more beneficial. I was, I am worried about on full, especially on, um. Actually, I don't think it matters. Auto or manually, he's still going to push people around. If he pushes people too far out of the range of Anpu as well, we don't really want that. I could probably try some battles with him, but we'll do that in another another setting. But Leo is just... I've only had one Leo, no gene hybrids in him. This is it. Leo is just HP. I do have attack and damage reduction here. I could, for survivability's sake, I should change this out to HP as well. Um... But again, it's just limited gear, working with what I've got. As you can see, I seem to have decent HP in, like, here. So I, I probably would switch this, um, take this off and bring in that piece that's on Crete, maybe. And I probably have a better weapon by now. But I don't overly worry about the weapon for the attack uh, stat. It's more for completing the set at this case. But I would prefer... I would prefer at this stage to just go full HP and keep him for survivability because Ampu's going to be my main damage. But you know how it goes, guys. Early game account, nothing crazy at all. But it's still fun to see how much I progressed. Literally, like a week ago, I was at chapter 21, and now I'm at chapter 32. And in like one day, we just started grinding. And this is what happens. So I'm going to throw a Creed in here just to see if it makes a difference. I probably should have put an HP helmet on Leo first. But let's just roll out of here with one more battle. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.